Welcome to 24 Hour Sports. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My sleep schedule may not agree with the time of this video, but I know my supporters do, and that's really all that matters. We got to report on these trades, and I didn't really look too much into them because, for one, I was asleep. I woke up out of my sleep, and I wondered why, but now I see. Maybe it was God's timing for this video to be done. So, this is my raw reaction. I always want to do a raw reaction, especially with trades, with everything that has happened in the trade deadline. First, we starting off with Kevin Durant to the Phoenix Suns. This is raw news. This literally just came out. While I was setting up this video, setting up the audio, this just came out. And let's talk about the details before I talk about the actual trade itself. So we got <clears throat> the Phoenix Suns have agreed on a blockbuster trade to acquire Brooklyn Nets star Kevin Durant. The Suns are sending Mikael Bridges, dog, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder, four first round picks, a 2028 pick swap for Kevin Durant and TJ Warren. And I think and TJ Warren was the icing on this kick for the Phoenix Suns because I said that's a bit much. I mean, I understand Kevin Durant is a superstar, but Mikael Bridges, Cam, four first round picks. And I thought that's a bit much just for Kevin Durant. And I seen TJ Warren and that made me feel a little more okay with this pick. I like it. I don't think either side got fleeced in this deal. I think it's an even trade. And I think <clears throat> maybe we started maybe we start a starting five hypothetically. Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Tory Craig, Katie, and Aiton. We get TJ Warren off the bench, adding some scoring if he can stay healthy. I like those guys. Dario Saric, I think they're pretty solid. Damian Lee, those guys coming off the bench. I feel good about this team. I would take it there. I, let me know in the comments if I'm taking this too far, but I would take it as far as saying championship. That's the expectation for the Phoenix Suns now. How can the Nuggets deal with this? Michael Porter Jr., who's guarding KD? Who's guarding Devin Booker? Chris Paul, even if Booker or Kevin Durant has an off-score night, Chris Paul can give you one of those games in the playoffs. It's not going to be consistent, but in a seven-game series, he can give you two or three games maybe. This allows him to just facilitate. This allows him to take a night off and stay healthy. So when the playoffs come, it's full go for Chris Paul. DeAndre Ayton, this just gives him more spacing. More spacing. You got to do something in that paint. Defensively, I think it's a solid move. Kevin Durant's defense has been underrated, but I think he really brought in before he got injured to playing defense. The defense for the Brooklyn Nets was good. I think he's going to bring some of that to the Phoenix Suns. I'm really a fan of this trade. Looking at it for the Brooklyn Nets, the Brooklyn Nets have done some things. When we say this is an all-time collapse, and it is, but I think they've done the best they could as far as moving these superstars. Looking at what they got for Kyrie Irving, looking at what they got for Kevin Durant, I feel good about it. Cam Johnson, a young three, a young shooter. Mikael Bridges, a 3 and D with potential to become something more, creating his own shot. And I just love what he is from a defensive standpoint. I th looking at that, him, Ben Simmons, if they manage to keep him, Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, this is a team that's going, especially with Jock Vaughn, I know he has something to say about these trades because we want guys who can play defense. That's kind of his motto, and he has that. He really got that. Jay Crowder, a veteran, going to be something in that locker room unless they buy him out, but I would keep him. I think he can contribute. I think this is still a solid team in the East. You know, they don't have the big names, but they got Dinwiddie, Mikael Bridges. I still feel solid about this team. They can compete in the playoffs. They might not win the East, but they can still compete. <clears throat> and they got the picks, of course. For four first-round picks? I'm looking at four first-round picks. So, overall, I mean, I think anytime you get Kevin Durant, it has to be an A grade. But if I'm looking at the Brooklyn Nets, I have to give them an A2 for what they got in return for Kevin Durant. Like I said, I feel good about both sides. Let me know what you think about this trade. Did anybody get fleeced in this deal? How does the ceiling look for the Brooklyn Nets? What does the future look like? I'm feeling good if I'm the Brooklyn Nets. Honestly, you know, we weren't winning anything with these superstars. So we're going to start young. We're going to start over. We got picks and young players. <sighs> It's, it's, it's the time. Let's go over to the second trade that kind of shook up the NBA. You know, Russell Westbrook <laughs> to the Utah Jazz. D'Angelo Russell to the Los Angeles Lakers. Let's talk about the details before we get into it. The Jazz will send Mike Conley and picks to the Timberwolves, while Russell Westbrook and a lightly protected 2027 Los Angeles Lakers first round pick. Lightly protected. That's the key thing to focus on because what are the Lakers going to be in 2027? 
I don't want to see that. So lightly protect. That's probably a top five, top top three protection on that pick, and this is deservedly so because that's important. But the Lakers are receiving D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, and Jared Vanderbilt. So let's talk about that for a minute. The Lakers. I watch the. I watch the Lakers. I just like seeing LeBron. I like seeing AD when they're healthy, of course, but. The Lakers were a bad basketball team. They turn over the ball still. They can't shoot. They shot well against the Thunder. I guess everybody shot well because the Thunder, they shot the lights out in that game when LeBron broke the record. But they don't have ideal spacing. So now you add in D'Angelo Russell. Can shoot, can facilitate. Like I said, I was listening to um, Patrick Beverly. He said, I was telling D'Lo, you know, he got the same skill set as a Harden, as a Kyrie. You, I'm challenging you to step up to this table, to step up to the plate. We seen him with the Brooklyn Nets. We seen what they did that one season where he was the lead star. He's that guy. But overall, looking at him versus Westbrook, I think Nigel Russell can still turn the ball over a lot at times. But overall, is shooting Malik Beasley, adding shooting, adding you know another guard presence. I think he can also play some defense. Jared Vanderbilt, he's known for defense, so he's gonna bring that. And really the defensive identity, I think the Lakers can still score. Whether that's in the paint, you might not like it. It's not flashy. They get out in transition. They have a high pace, but they can still score overall. And defensively is where they really had to clean things up. Jared Vanderbilt is going to be important. Him, Rui, I feel good about this move. I think this is the best case scenario for the Lakers. I actually, true, truly realistically, let me know in the comments if I'm crazy, but I like this move more than the Lakers getting Kyrie Irving. I think Jared Vanderbilt is going to be a cog, important piece. D'Angelo Russell adding some of that same scoring. He's not the scorer of a Kyrie Irving, but he's adding some of that same scoring, some of that same shooting, facilitating, and he's bigger. Malik Beasley also, another, another guy who can add some bench presence or maybe even start for the Lakers occasionally. So uh, over looking at because the Lakers were a bad team, so I think they needed more players than just Kyrie Irving to fix this thing. And I, I feel good about this. Um, looking at the Timberwolves, Mike Conley. I think Mike Conley can still be a serviceable starting point guard. He's going to help Anthony Edwards and hit, continue his development, so I like that. Um, the picks for the Timberwolves. Timberwolves, the thing about them, they still play some dumb basketball. They do. And they're a young team, and they just haven't gotten over the hump to that next level yet. Watching them against the Magic, I'm not talking about the fight. I'm just talking about the basketball game from dribble to dribble, from end to end. <sighs> just looking at how they get into some of their sets defensively, some of the things they do, it's just, it screams young basketball team. It really does. And the turnovers, they still turn the ball over at a high rate. So I think Mike Conley coming in, being that veteran savvy, he's going to be good for that team. And I really want to see what they do. Him versus D'Lo, I don't want to get into that. I think D'Lo right now gives you more as a complete player. But I like Mike Conley. I like this move. I don't think they're downgrading to say that. <clears throat> and let's talk about the Utah Jazz. Overall, I think no no team really lost in this deal. The trade deadline was solid. No team really got fleeced. I think maybe, depending on how Kyrie, his availability, and what he does for the Mavericks, that may be the deal that I have to come back to and say was a fleece. But overall, I like these two picks. And just to touch on the last trade we've seen, Josh Hart to the New York Knicks for Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish in a protected future first-round pick. So, Cam Reddish, a lot of people, all guys that know ball, that have watched ball, talk ball, Cam Reddish is a dog. He's one of those ones, and I don't really think he just got a full opportunity, but now on the Portland Trail Blazers, it's his time. If he can't get it done here, then where is he going to get it done? This is his time right now, Cam Reddish, you on the clock. We got Damian Lillard, we got Anthony Simon, Shaden Sharp, guys like that, Jeremy Grant, now Cam Reddish, long, versatile, 3 and D. So, 
I really want to see. Actually, I'm rooting for Cam Reddish. Comment, a <laughs> hey, comment, rooting for Cam in the comments because we all rooting for Cam. Everybody that watched that Duke team, that watched him come up through high school, they want Cam Reddish to win. I want Cam Reddish to win. So, I really like this trade. I think Josh Hart, especially for the Knicks team, who looks like they may be a sneaky contender in the East with Jalen Brunson. People talking about that Villanova connection, but him, Julius Randle, playing like he played. I think he's playing even better than he played in his All Star season. So. Like I said, I have to feel good about trade deadline. All of these moves, the biggest move being Kevin Durant. I have the Phoenix Suns as my West winners right now. I think I still got Boston coming out of the East. Or maybe Milwaukee might have something to say about that. But like always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We're going to keep you updated with the NBA in all sports. <laughs> we out.